is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll be making a 3D snowdrop cake design. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. To start off, we're going to make our colors, and we're going to make two colors, plus we're going to use some extra white. The first one I'm going to make is going to be a nice light blue, and we're going to use the following liquid gel colors. Royal Blue, Coal Black, and finally, some Lemon Yellow. And we're using all American style buttercream, but you can use whatever kind of buttercream you prefer. To start with, I'm just going to do a nice drop of my blue, because I want to make something that's not quite pastel, but maybe not quite just a little bit under a medium tone. I'm just going to do a few little specks of black. I want to make a color that reminds me of a nice like winter day. So if this is enough blue, I might just add a little more black to it. And I think it's going to be Let's get all that white up from the bottom. Make sure it's all mixed around. And I think we've definitely got enough blue in there. It's present enough. I just wanna add just a touch more of that black, just to take it towards that little bit of slate gray vibe. Or maybe more of a slate blue, I would say. And that is looking lovely. We've got a nice color. It's still definitely blue, but just that touch of black just gives it a little bit of that slate feel, but it's still a nice light color. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It's going to read really well. And our little white blossoms that are going to be on top of it should pop off of it nicely. For our green, I want to go a little more towards the yellow side than the blue. So I've got both blue and yellow out here. I'm just going to do some nice little specks of each, but more of the yellow than the blue. Just so we tend a little bit more towards maybe what you might call an kind of like all over mossy color. And I'm just going to add a little of that black as well. We're going to give it a mix around, check it out, and then look at it in comparison to the blue we made. Just want to make sure that our green stands out and that it reads well and that it really looks like a different color. It's looking good. I think I just want to make it a little more intense and go a little heavier on my yellow and a little heavier on that black as well. So I'm just gonna do just a tiny touch of blue when I'm making it darker and a little bit of black. And that is looking really fantastic. And I like the way it looks in comparison to the blue we made. I think it's really going to read nicely on the side of our cake. We are going to use three 12 inch disposable decorating bags for this project. You can see one is fitted directly with a coupler. Sorry, one is fitted with a coupler so we can change tips. And the other two are fitted directly with the tips. Our bag of green is fitted with a coupler and we'll be using the green with a number four tip a number six, and also a 352. Our bag of white is fitted with a number 61. 
This is a standard size curved petal tip. And finally, we have a bag of color that is loosely mixed white and green together that we're gonna be using with a number 102. This one isn't striped. I just took equal amounts of white and green and stirred them together lightly so the colors are still kind of separated and it creates a bit of a marbleized effect, which you can see in the bag there. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. We're just looking for a kind of diffuse in-between color. Let's review the techniques we're gonna to use to create our snowdrop cake. The first are the petals we're gonna make and they're gonna be teardrop shaped and we're gonna be using our 61. And some of them will be flat on the surface of the cake and others will be on top of other frosting elements that we're gonna create. So they're gonna give us our cute little unique characteristic teardrop shaped petals for our snowdrop flowers. And you wanna think about the fat end as being fixed. The skinny end is drawing that petal. And so you just wanna pull down, rotate a little bit and pull up. And that's gonna give us a nice little teardrop shape. Next, we wanna make little trumpets in the middle of the flowers. So it's gonna be that little kind of fluted thing that you would see in the middle of say like a daffodil. You don't really see it as much in the snowdrops, but they have a nice little trumpet in there in the middle in between their little teardrop shaped petals. And we're gonna use our 102 and we're just gonna do a little zigzag motion and create almost a little pile of frosting that's just piled up on top of itself. So I'm just gonna hold the bag straight up and down squeeze, move over, and back in and on itself. And that's gonna create a little depth and just a little bit, you can see from the side, of that kind of idea of a little fluted trumpet in the middle. And these don't have to be perfect or exact, they just have to have a little bit of a kind of like a ruffle of frosting in there. For our stems, we're gonna use our number four tip. and. A lot like when we're piping stems on the side of the cake, on the other cake designs we do, we're gonna hold the bag at a 45 degree angle. The back is gonna be pointing in whatever direction you're moving. So we wanna change it up as we change the angle of our stem. And we just wanna kind of very lightly touch the surface with the bottom edge of that tip. And this will keep us from impeding the flow of frosting. So we wanna start squeezing, let it attach. Oh, there we go and then gently just glide along the surface or just right above it if you have the control to do so. And when you're ready, end. And for this, we're gonna do some curved lines. So you wanna think about changing the back end of the bag so that it's going in that direction. So kind of practice moving your hand and a little arc motion just to prepare yourself for that for when you're working on the side of your cake. We're also gonna make some pill shapes. Think of these as large puffy lines. They can be short or long with our number six. And we're gonna use some shorter ones for the caps on top of our snowdrops and some longer ones that are gonna be a little bit like leaves. So to do this, we want to be up off the surface, like we're gonna do a dot. This is gonna allow that frosting to balloon out. And when we reach our full diameter, then we just wanna move, travel as much as you need to, stop and just pull back on it. And that should give you a nice wide long line. You can even taper off your pressure if you want to, but that's just a little more advanced. So I did a short one, I'm gonna do a long one now. Let's squeeze, let that frosting balloon out, and then just slowly move so that you continue the width of that line and it's nice and even. When you're ready to end it, stop squeezing and pull back on your fat line. And you can see that gives us some nice little chunky lines that are gonna be great for doing the little leaves that are on the top of your snowdrops and also the cap that's on top of the flowers. And finally, we're going to make some leaves. We're gonna use our 352, and it's gonna be kind of a classic setup where we're gonna hold the bag at a 45 degree angle. The back end is gonna be pointing in the direction that we're gonna pull our leaf, except on these, we're gonna make them long. So a lot like the pill we did, we're going to extend and exaggerate the length, so much longer than we normally would. So just kind of keep going so you get a nice even width, pull a little quicker, 
and taper when you want to make the top. And this is a great way to make nice long leaves on the side of your cake. You can see if you can really control your rate, you make it so it's nice and almost smooth, which is a great little look and you get that nice little vein there in the middle. We'll review how we're gonna build our blossoms now. So we're gonna take all those techniques that we just talked about that probably seemed a little loose and disconnected and talk about how we're gonna combo these to make our actual snowdrop flowers. The first thing we're gonna do is pipe a single petal where we want our flower to be with that 61. So right on the surface of the cake, just a little bit lower. We need to leave a little gap between the top of our stem and where we want our actual flower to be so we have room for that little cap on top later. After we get that first petal there, so think of it kind of lined up in the middle, we're gonna grab our bag with our 102 and do that little zigzaggy trumpet there. So just to build up a little bit of mass there in the center. And then we're gonna switch back to our bag of 61 and we're gonna do two more petals. These will be on top of that trumpet, so we wanna kind of anchor back above it, just directly above it, right? Kind of hugging it with the fat into the tip. Do one petal on the left side and one petal on the right side. And that's gonna give us a nice three-dimensional look to these little flowers that are gonna be on the side of our cake. Then we'll grab our bag of green fitted with number six and we're just gonna do a little cap on the top of the flower because they have that little, um, I don't even know what to call it. I'm not even sure what that part of a flower is called, but where the stem meets the base of the flower, it has that little almost bulb shaped um, green bit to it. So we're gonna do that to kind of connect the stem and the flower together and give it a nice finished polished look. We're now gonna coat our cake with the blue buttercream that we made earlier. And I'm just gonna start with the top and you can see I've got my cake already coated with white and it's nice and firm. This allows us to use a lot less food coloring and a lot less colored buttercream. So I always like it because it's nice because you never want really blue stained teeth and tongue. So I'm just gonna go with a nice little mound there on the top and just use my spatula to spread it out in a nice thin layer. So just get it coated so that we have a nice even coating of that color. On our cake on the top. So just get it spread out and then just tilt your spatula to the side to like a 45 degree angle and just give that turntable a spin and that'll level it out and even it out and smooth it out for you really quickly. I'm going to load up my spatula and then just loosely cover the sides as well. So just give it a nice little layer. Shouldn't it take too much to go over the sides of our cake. We're going to use, I would say, for this one, either a five or six inch round, just to make sure we have enough surface area there on the sides to do a couple of groupings of snowdrops that have multiple flowers, maybe some singles as well. You just wanna make sure you have enough space. These are cute little flowers, but because they have those nice little curved stems, they'll actually take up some real estate on the side. So I didn't wanna use a smaller four inch round because it's probably not quite quite enough area to do all my little fun groupings. So it'll only take me a couple of minutes just working around with my spatula just to get all the way back to the beginning. And once I go over it with my spatula, I'll take my bench scraper and my bowl scraper just to make sure that these sides are nice and even and straight. Fill in any little dips or air pockets. And make sure we have a nice even coating. There we go. So we made it all the way around. I'm just going to give it a pass with my bowl scraper and then my bench scraper and then a level off the top as well. So we'll just get rid of that build up there at the top. 
and that helps to remove some of the excess buttercream of this from the sides as well and straightened it out. So just same thing, spatula at a 45 degree angle and just gently swipe towards yourself. You can use that rotating action of the turntable if you're using one to help you as well. Just nice light strokes. It'll take off the excess around the edges that you built up and give you a nice clean look on your cake. And this actually looks pretty good. I maybe have one or two little areas I can see, not even really showing up on camera, where I have just a little bit of white showing through. I'll probably let it chill and then just go over it and fix any of those little areas with a nice thin layer. So we're gonna start decorating by marking the side of our cake where we want our stems to go. And this video is gonna be a little different because we're skipping working on our flower nail because we're gonna pipe everything, including our flowers, directly on our cake. So we wanna make sure we have a nice little template for ourselves to follow. We have some nice lines to act as a guide and we wanna do some just little groupings of stems and we want them to have a nice little curve at the top. So think that kind of like bell curve on the top. And you can make them a little wider, a little narrower, whatever works for you, whatever you like. And we can always do more than one flower. Um, sometimes I like to do one kind of wide on the top and a little narrower curve on the bottom. And a lot of these stems are gonna end up meeting up, so I don't have to worry about all the lines. Just kind of get that curve on there so you have a nice little guide. And where the stems meet up, especially if it gets a little wonky, we'll just cover that up with a little leaf. So after I get a grouping on there, I'm going to do two more. So I'll have three little groupings of flowers. Some of them might have two stems. Some of them might have three. I like to keep it kind of uneven. And we'll use this as a guide to pipe our lines on next. We've got our little lines marked on the side. I've got a little template to go. I've already gone ahead and done some of my little groupings. I'm gonna finish this last one to show you as an example. And we're gonna be doing the lines with number four tip. And you can start at the end or, you know, up here at the top at the curve and work your way down, or you can start at the base and work your way up. It's really whatever works best for you. And sometimes I find it's easier to start at the top when I'm over here on the left and at the base when I'm over on the right. It just feels a little more natural to me. It might feel more natural in reverse if you're a lefty or just because, you know, it feels more natural the other way. So give it a try, do it a couple of different ways, see what actually feels really natural, unimpeded, for you because we're all gonna be a little bit different. And don't be afraid to stop and restart lines. That's the other thing with doing curves. Sometimes people try to go all at once with it and it's nice just to take a little break. So if you need to readjust your bag or your angle, you can. So I'm gonna start over here at the top for this one and just let that line connect. And you can see I've got my bag at a 45 degree angle I'm just letting it glide above the surface. And I got all the way around the curve and I just kind of need to readjust myself a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my time and do that. Don't worry about it. I can connect to the end of that line, even if it's a blunt end. I find it's a little easier to reconnect if you just pull a little quick at the end and kind of taper that. It allows you to go about halfway back up the end of that little taper and reconnect and then pull down. And so I'm just gonna go really close to the surface to make sure that my line of frosting connects without getting a lot of bumps or wiggles. And I got a little air bubble there, so I'm just gonna kind of correct the direction because my line flopped off to the side and then do the same thing. Just keep working until I get all the way down to the bottom. And you can see, even though I did that line in three steps, one, because I was changing directions and I need to readjust my bag, and the second one, because of an air bubble, the overall look is really nice and smooth. So don't be afraid to tackle something in multiple parts. I'm gonna do this one from the bottom up, just to show you the difference. And sometimes I find this a little easy, but easier, but typically, only if I'm curving to the right. If I try to curve to the left, it's a little awkward, which is why I like to start my ones that go to the left at the top. 
So just up, really gentle on the surface. Let that curve over nice and big. So nice little line on that side too. And I'm just gonna make one shorter one that connects to my first line over here. There we go. We'll let this chill just a little bit, a few minutes, just to let those lines firm up. That way if we touch them while we're working, it's not such a big deal. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll start putting on our blossoms. But you can see there we have our lines on our cake, all of our little groupings ready to go. Now that our lines are set up a little bit, we're going to start working on our flowers. And I've piped a sample one here so we can see kind of the spacing just a little bit. We need room for that little cap on the top, our little um, ruffle trumpet, and then the petal sticking out at the bottom. So we actually need to go about a half inch down from where our stem ends to start that little first petal that we're going to do against the surface. So it'll feel a little weird, but make sure you leave a gap. So if we start there, we're going to track down a little bit. The fat end of the tip is going to be touching the surface of the cake, and we want to get as close to the cake as possible and just pipe it a little teardrop shaped petal. So I'm going to do the same thing down here for this one as well. So just a quick little teardrop there. And you can see we've got a nice little gap in between. We're perfectly set up for success. We're gonna grab our bag that has our mix of green and white and our 102 tip. And we're gonna do our little ruffle trumpet on top. So just start here. We're gonna start just above the base of that petal. So just a little bit in between. Um, the bottom of the stem and the top of the petal, and we're going to do that little zigzag and make ourselves a little trumpet. So just layer a little ruffle of frosting right on there. Don't be afraid to add a little extra. We just want the idea of that little trumpet that's in the center of these little flowers. And I'm going to do the other one down here as well. Now, if your frosting feels soft and you feel like maybe it's a little scary to put the top petals on right now, you can chill your cake at this stage. I'd go around and do all of them and just get this set up so that it's ready to go. Give it a chill for five, 10 minutes if you need to. I'm fine working on it, so I'm just gonna keep going ahead. But just note that if you're having trouble putting the top petals on and the little cap on without disturbing your um, bottom petal and that trumpet, that you can take a little pause right here. And it's a great place to just take a little break clean up a little bit, do a few things, and then it'll be ready to pipe on because it'll be nice and firm and easy for you. I'm gonna go ahead and start my second petals. I'm gonna do one off to the left and one off to the right. So I wanna just rotate my cake so I'm in a nice spot where I'm at an easy angle. So I'm gonna just push it over a little to the right so that I can nest this tip right here. The fat end is gonna to touch the cake and this skinny end in that curve is just kind of rest on top of that little trumpet. So I just want to go right on top here and pull a nice little teardrop shape. So just get that petal started out a little bit and back. And you can see it's right on top of that. It works out really nicely. To get the one on the other side, I'm just going to rotate the cake a little bit the other direction so that I can get myself set up on this side and do the same thing. And I find sometimes the petals I do on the right are a little convex, but overall it gives me the right look. So it's not a big deal. So we get one petal on the left, one petal on the right, and one hanging down in the middle, and we get a great look for these little flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other two petals on this bottom one here, and then we'll put the little caps on the top. And just take your time. Give it a nice little squeeze, but don't go too fast. I find that's the key to not disturbing my previous work and getting a nice finish on these. And you can see we've got some beautiful little snowdrops forming. I've got my number six on my green, and I'm just gonna do a short, fat little pill shape on the top of each of these to finish them off 
and that should allow you to connect the base of those flowers to the stems. So just give it a squeeze, let that ball form, and just extend it a little bit until you hit the stem. I'm gonna go around and do the rest of my little flowers on my cake, and then I'm gonna give this a little time in the refrigerator to chill up so I can add some finishing details with my number six tip and my leaf tip. Our cake has had a few minutes to chill up. We just wanna make sure that we're not gonna disturb some of those lines we made with our number four tip when we go back in with our number six and our 352. I'm gonna use my number six first, and a lot of times these little flowers have a little leaf up top that kinda of looks like it opens up and that stem that the flower is on kinda of comes out of. So they're kinda of like rolled up and they have kind of almost like that pill shape vibe to them. So we're gonna go ahead and put some of those in. And then we're going to switch to our 352 and use that. So we just want to start here at the top, get that nice kind of pill shape. And as you intersect with the stem, just taper off your pressure or move a little quicker. And that will make the line a little skinnier at the end and give you that nice little shape for the top of these. And so I'm gonna do one at the top and maybe one over here at the side and I'll leave some room at the bottom for the leaves I'm gonna do with my 352. So we're just gonna come out maybe over here. We've got some good negative space and pull it in towards that line and just speed up as you get a little closer to it. I've changed to my 352 tip and I'm just gonna put some leaves in at the base just to kind of fill things in, join things together. If you've got any bumps, wiggles, gaps, mistakes, whatever on your lines, this is a great way to cover them up. You can literally put them on top of the base of the lines if you need or want to. I'm just gonna put some on that are long and some that are short just to give myself a little bit of variety and I like the way my lines look, so I'm just gonna start right next to them and leave them kind of open and exposed. And I'm just using this tip just to pull a nice long leaf and I'm really kind of dragging the bottom point along the surface of the cake and kind of in, just in the cake, just to guide myself and give myself a nice little track. And if you pull a little faster at the end, you'll get a nice little peak on the end, a nice little point. You can see this is shaping up nicely. So I'm gonna do one on the other side. As well, and what do we think? Maybe just a little tiny one over here, just to finish it off. Oh, that looks nicely balanced. And so I'm just gonna go through and finish my other little groupings and do the same thing. So just anywhere you need or want a leaf, if you wanna cover up some of your stems, if you didn't like the way they look, just go ahead and do them right on top of each other, right next to each other. I tend to pull shorter ones where the flowers are lower down and where you've got more space there, you can put in some longer ones if you want. And don't be afraid to leave some gaps and kind of show some blue. And you can see I've already got started on this one. Nice little bit of practice. just to make that little grouping a little bit fatter. But you can see now we have a beautiful finished cake. We've got those little delicate snowdrop blossoms on there. They're perfect for winter time when these actually come out, when it's got a little snow on the ground. Uh, they always make a nice little picturesque scene in the winter time. But we're working on the side of the cake. It's great practice for both piping flowers and lines, doing some leaves, and you've got a lot of wiggle room. There's a lot really you can do to cover up any little mistakes or blips or, um, I don't know, foibles, whatever you wanna call them, uh, with your leaves at the end, so you don't really have to worry. And there's actually not that many flowers on the side of the cake to complete the design. So overall, it might be a little tricky in terms of skill level if you're just starting out to actually get smooth lines on there, but it's really good practice for it. And there's not actually a lot of flowers or colors involved with this. So we hope you enjoyed this cake and you like our finished little design for our snowdrop flower cake. If you did, try checking out some of our other 3D flower cake designs like our basic rose. 
if you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.